Hey, it's China Mike, Brewdashnews.com, and we're doing kind of a recap, a redo, a revisit of beers that were kind of crappy, but uh, you know, maybe with a few more weeks. They Some could... people asked. They so, wanted to know what are, how are they developing with time. True, true, true. Well, I think I think mine. I was like, ah, we should try it. That might have been your suggestion, but like, I think I think the viewers really wanted to know uh, about your beer, maybe you know, clearing up or just uh, conditioning more over time and then becoming something a little more uh, palatable, I don't know, like something that she'll be happier with. We'll find out today. So, to, to uh, uncover exactly what we're talking about, if you are a regular viewer of our channel, you'll know that uh, Mike had a disappointing Pilsner. And uh, it was starting, as he said, like I think he hinted, you know, it, it started to tastes a little bit better like he like the first time he had it he was like ah oh, this is bad and then like as we were getting up to the time we actually put a video camera on and, and tasted it in front of you uh he said ah oh, this has gotten a little bit better yeah you said it's still it, it, you said yeah this tastes off and i said it actually doesn't taste as off as it did before <laughs> right so maybe actually it was green beer i don't know true 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 so now let's so, see we're, if it's less okay, green. So we're going to start with this guy. Yeah, we're yeah. going to start with this guy. So uh, this is go the ahead Pilsner. And taste it. I'm going to throw it on the camera so people can see that it's clearing I mean, up. It, it's actually it, clearing up pretty nice like it should in yeah, the fridge. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. It's And that is a, a development that is an improvement because I know that when we tasted it the first time, yeah. uh, it was it was still pretty hazy. And this yeah. is uh, I can clearing. Already on the aroma, it's like, if you blindfolded me and gave me this beer, I would... You'd say like, why is this this Hefeweizen? This is a really beautiful Hefeweizen. Yeah. So the aroma has not improved. Um, it's not no. become more Pilsner-esque. No. Um, and I'm going to taste it and see. Yeah. Yeah. It's a crystal Weizen. I mean, that's what it tastes, <laughs> right? Um, it's, um, yeah. no, it's not, it hasn't really improved. In fact, it might be flabbing out. It might just sort of have hit its peak. It's sort of not, and it's just, it definitely has a Hefeweizen thing to it, and I, I didn't, I haven't brewed a Hefeweizen in a long time, so it's not like that was in the thing. It's just some sort of contaminant that is very subtly given it this thing. Or it could be trying to do, you know, cool to warm lager fermentation and sitting on that yeast cake as the temperature had spiked up and down a few times. It could just be off yeast flavors put into the beer, right? Yeah. Because the, it's not cloudy. It's not. It's it, you know. Even in a fridge, contaminated beer will carbonate slowly, and it's been in there now for at least six weeks. So it's not like overcarbonated. So there isn't like some sort of biological thing that's going on still. It's just. It could just be yeast output that was mm. some weird flavors put in there from that from that particular yeast. There were there were a couple of comments about the S189 yeast strain. Some people saying that they got a little bit of a heffy thing out of that yeast strain. Really? So that could be what this is, despite the fact that I did that dunkel with that yeast and we thought that was really yeah, pretty was good. Great. But maybe all that caramel note was sort of like blending together with this and making us Covering it think up. of a yep. bready, you know, thing, oh, right? Maybe, so. maybe. But that was great. I, all I have is great memories of yeah. that beer. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. All right. So, so yeah. To the sink it goes <laughs> down the drain. Yep. Yeah. Time to empty a keg. Mm. All right. We'll put that one to the side. So close the loop on that. It didn't get any better. Didn't get any better. <laughs> well, it changed a little bit, but I think, but not yet better. Good to explore and sure. good to do it. All right. Raw ale. I didn't like this. <laughs> I mean, yeah, all you raw ale brewers, I, I cheers to you. Guys. I think that we learned a lot by putting out that video. There were some very good tips in the comments uh, about the mashing, um, and certainly, like, if I were to do it again, I'd take the um, tips. What is that? <laughs> I would take the tips of of uh, what they put there and and do it better uh, the next time. Uh, yeah, so. This is just a tip. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the aroma is really. I, there was a there was a commenter who said, you know, I wonder if that uh, kind of wacky um, who sort of uh, grassy note you're getting is uh, DMS because of the non-boiling of it. It could have been. But I, I always felt like that was more of like a, co yeah. a cooked corn type thing. Yeah, it presents a little bit differently. Some people get like tomato paste from mm. DMS and stuff. Um, yeah, so the aroma to me, there's it's definitely scary. like a, there's def definitely, actually, you know what, I mean, and you can tell, let's, I mean, you it's, can tell by the color. Yeah. There's definitely actually, 
a wet cardboard component to it. And that very well could be, you know, having not boiled it and then whatever else is in there is just sort of not boiling it. You're also not driving off some of the O2 that's yep. in it. Not that fermentation would have taken care of some of that, but um, let's, you know, I think we just need to accept that there is, it's a little bit gray. Yep. Um, yep. Actually, I kind of like the, the flavor is better than the first time I tasted it. It's mellowed out. It's mellowed. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. It's not um, great, but it's, it's not great, but it's not as like, yeah, what it was before. I think the issue also is with these one gallon batches, which is this is 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 what it is. Yeah. The uh, the keg that I put this into yeah. is almost is almost two gallons. Yeah. So right, the right. headspace yeah. it, and it's hard to yeah. yeah, it's a little bit hard to purge. Yeah. Uh, I, I've never really been comfortable with this idea of CO two on the top and burping it like six or seven times. Whether or not how much you're really cycling, but anyway. But, yeah. Especially when you're talking about half the volume, yes, right, in a small keg. Um, there is a fruit-like hop component <laughs> still in there, but there's definitely a cardboard, a grass, vegetal thing in there that isn't uh, wildly pleasant. And there's definitely a flabbiness to it, which I think is some, some sort of oxidative component yep. that's been accelerated by the rawness of it. If of you it will. all, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would drink this as a penance or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I mean, it just looks unpleasant. Mm. Um, yeah, a lot of the vapor has escaped now that it's been sitting here and I keep shaking it. But there's a lot of like raw um, um, grain thing going on there, which maybe maybe there is, maybe we are picking up some MMS to DMS conversion. Um, so, uh, yeah. yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm glad, we, I'm glad we held on to what was left of this and gave it a try. To the sink! Down to the, the drain. Sink, another goes. sinker, another yeah. sinker. Yeah. Cool. Mm. And that's how it goes sometimes, doing it for the dash. Um, and, uh, yeah. you know, I don't know. I don't feel too bad about, like, unless I, you know, unless I put a lot of uh, money and or effort into the beer, that's when I feel crummy about pouring something yeah. down the sink. Yeah. This was a one gallon batch. It was an experiment for the dash and yeah, I mean, if it didn't come out great, but uh, at least I learned something. Like, I think a lot of the benefit of doing this channel is when we get to post something and people who have more experience can say, yeah, try this and that and then yeah. the other thing like the next time. And yeah. I think that's the, that's the the communication that I kind of dig. For me, a lot of the beers I brew, I'm trying to learn something or explore something. And once I've tasted it, I'm usually like, well, okay, now I understand that principle of what I was trying to accomplish there, and then I'm ready to get rid of it. And, <laughs> but but <laughs> then apply the knowledge to something else, yep. right? Like I'm not opposed to brewing a beer. I mean, I like brewing beer, right? And I like drinking beer, but in the terms of like just being a better brewer or being a more knowledgeable brewer, um, I have no problem with just, I mean, I get limited space, right? So I want to brew more and experiment more, but I can't have like 30 beers just sitting around. So uh, you got to you gotta move stuff through and these two can make room for other stuff. That's right. More experiments to come. Yep. Which is good for the viewer. That is true. So uh, I think I'm, I think I'd like to do like, um, I don't know, the whole like beer glass thing. Yep. I love to do a bunch of lagers, do something in October. You know, have a bunch of uh, clean uh, German, European lagers, uh, get some bunch of people together, and then, uh, you know, I think that is like my new goal. Yep. It's a nice it's a nice goal to it's have. It's a good goal. Hopefully I don't have to pour those down the sink as yes. well before yeah. people come over. Yeah. But, uh, thank you for watching. We appreciate uh, your time. Uh, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Hopefully that you watch the original videos for both of these beers. If uh, We'll definitely uh, put those into the description below, if not in some kind of card-like button, which you can click on and then watch the original uh, video where we discuss both these poor beers. <laughs> it's only to talk about these poor beers uh, in this video. So uh, like this if you like it. A subscribe to our channel for John and Mike, brewdashdudes.com. Brew on. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I'm not drinking that. <laughs> <laughs>